Hello, everyone. My name is Sarah Suomen, and I am working for the Ocean Biodiversity Information System, which is part of the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission of UNESCO. I'm here today to talk to you about two OBAN endorsed projects, which is the Pac-Man project and eDNA Expeditions project. Um, I will first give you just one slight introduction into what is OBIS in case you're not uh, aware. Then we'll talk a little bit about the two different projects and especially what we have been working on this year. And finally, uh, just one slide on what eDNA data in OBIS is and what our future plans are for that. So what OBIS is, is more than a database. We are a community of practice of data managers, scientists, and users. We get um, data from over 1,000 different data providing institutions. Um, we are a gateway to marine biodiversity data and information. Our priority areas are of course in data mobilization. So bringing all that data together in one place so that it is searchable and findable and accessible um, and comparable, but also in data application. So in the use of this data that is in our database uh, to provide help for decision-making um, and fit-for-purpose data products and packages. Um, so that's in a nutshell of what OBIS is, um, and I'm already gonna go into what um, our projects are that are part of OBON. Um, the first one is Pac-Man, which is a marine invasive species project utilizing eDNA for a monitoring program. Um, PACMAN stands for Pacific Islands Marine Bioinvasions Alert Network, and this project is implemented in Fiji. Um, this project had several um, clear pillars um, that it was built on to kind of try to make an operational monitoring system that would actually bring value to the local community. And the first one was really that we worked closely with stakeholders to identify their needs. We developed the monitoring program together with an international scientific advisory board uh, we developed the full complete um, data workflow um, from raw data to the decision support tool. And of course, we had open access training to provide capacity development and hopefully continuation of the project and um, the capacity in Fiji around this. Um, so first of all, we started with a um, needs assessment of the local community, and it was really clear from the very beginning that there was very little information on marine invasive species available in Fiji and at the harbor, so we were mostly working in the Suva Harbor. Um, and um, so we decided together with the International Scientific Advisory Boards that the monitoring plan includes also baseline analyses of the biodiversity at these, at these sites, these hotspot sites. Um, and so that meant that what we did was collect three different types of samples, which was um, settlement plates, water samples, and plankton net samples um, at four different sites at the Suva Harbor. And these were then analyzed for community um, composition with meta barcoding with two broad range uh, biomarkers, which was the CO1 and 18S. In addition, we did develop also a few um, qPCR assays um, because one of our objectives was to also have that early detection rapid response, which is really only possible with, with quantitative PCR. Um, so at least we wanted to get the community started with developing these assays and these methods. And all of this field work was implemented by our partner at the University of South Pacific, who uh, developed the actual um, field workflows and, and implemented them. Um, and our work at OBIS really focuses, of course, on the standardized data management um, and the data workflow. Um, so from the Pac-Man monitoring campaigns, we record um, the field data and the specimen data to Bluetooth data management platform, where it is easily accessible through APIs. Um, the raw meta barcoding data is submitted to um, NCBI um, and is um, analyzed through our own bioinformatics pipeline directly into Darwin Core archives. So this is the data format that OBIS uses um, in our database. This means that the uh, final formatting step is integrated in already into the analysis. Uh, this data then flows into OBIS and it's actually taken from OBIS into the decision support tool. So this means that we're not only looking at the data from a specific um, study, but we are looking at all the occurrence data that is available for our location of interest feeding that into our decision support tool um, and um, looking into the possible risk species 
to help um, the decision makers to um, identify what possible species are, are can be an issue to them. The risk analysis is uh, based on the likelihood of the urban invasion and the probable severity of the expected impacts. So we are looking at known invasive species, but also species that are not from the area, but are from similar thermal ranges that could possibly become an issue to the area. Um, as you can see here, all of our workflows are open access. So the Pac-Man Bioinformatics pipeline is on GitHub and can be easily accessed and used from there. And in addition, all of our workflows for the decisions portal will also become available. Now, just to show you um, a short look at what this will actually look like. So this is really um, the newest version of the decision support tool that I got from our data manager, Peter Provost, yesterday. Um, and you can see, for example, the risk analysis for the tunicate didemnum per lucidum in Fiji. Um, and this map clearly shows where the species um, is known and is known as invasive. So we can see that in Western Australia, it is considered invasive. And now we have our first detection in the Suva Harbor in Fiji. And it's something that we would highlight in this decision support tool so that the local managers can go and um, investigate further what the situation is in the Suva Harbor. We had multiple other possible invasive species detections as well from the eDNA. And here we have not been very selective. So we list um, many potential species, but we do indicate that the confidence has been low. For example, the risk is possibly low and we indicate that there is a status that you should still review it, right? Um, so here you can filter through what you're interested in. And of course, probably look at the very high risk ones first and evaluate if you need to investigate this further. So we really try to um, showcase this as the first line of information, but not be too selective in, in what we add here because um, it's, in, it's important for you to get that information of any possible invasive species if they potentially are a high risk for the environment that you are trying to manage. Um, and of course, um, this Pac-Man decision support tool is, um, is intended to be able to be used in many different areas of the globe. So it's not only linked to Fiji and the program that we have there, but as I mentioned, the data is taken from OBIS. So this can actually be used in many different locations and can be adopted. And we have this, now this, um, the pillars that are needed to build such a monitoring program available. So um, we have a nice experience here of, of building a program together with the local community that I think might be interesting for other areas as well. Um, and then on to our next project, which was the eDNA Expeditions project, that this is a global citizen science eDNA sampling campaign. And so here we um, developed a very simple sampling kit, which was just a syringe and a filter. And we sent 20 of these around the world. Um, so 20 to each location. Um, and the local communities themselves um, developed a sampling day together with either school children or other local communities to go out and take samples from their marine world heritage sites. Um, and you can see here some pictures of what this looked like in different parts of the world. And there are also more pictures and um, stories from these different sampling campaigns on our websites. So uh, up to so so far, we have done uh, twenty two marine world heritage sites. The sampling was conducted in <clears throat> excuse me twenty twenty two and twenty twenty three. We shipped um, in total five hundred and fifty eDNA kits to these sites, which I think we got back four hundred that we were able to sequence in the end. So there were in fact a few sites where the political situation either didn't allow sampling or sending the kits back. So um, we had, that's the reason why we have a few less than what we sent. Um, and training was done really just by video calls. We had also a training booklet and different training videos to um, enable this sampling. And we um, engaged over 200 citizens and scientists in this work. 
Um, and what we have been now doing is really trying to find a way to showcase the information that we got from these sampling campaigns um, for the citizens and also possibly for scientists or for the managers of their local site. Um, and we wanted to find ways to, to have an engaging, um, an engaging dashboard where you could easily find the main information um, that we can give from this. These sampling campaigns were small. Um, you had only 20 samples in very often very geographically large sites, which had multiple habitats. So these are really just a snapshot that we could get from, from these small campaigns. So we wanted to rather showcase um, the diversity that we did get rather than saying something about the full diversity at the sites, because of course this we cannot do. We did also compare to OBIS and GBIF uh, information from the sites and we got around 10% of the total species known from most of the sites, which is quite good for one sampling campaign, but of course is not a full picture of the biodiversity in the site. But in this page, for example, you can see the results from um, one of our most successful sites, which was in the Aldabra Atoll in Seychelles. Um, you can see that we got from those 20 samples almost 850 species, of which almost 400 were different fish species. Um, one of our main focuses in this dashboard was really to um, make that eDNA data a little bit more concrete, to um, try to showcase what this means in terms of the immense biodiversity that we can actually detect. And so we decided to have a gallery of all the species that were, that were detected. So this gallery will allow um, the citizens to browse through what species were detected in their location. Um, and by clicking on an image, you will also get information, uh, a small um, um, information on that species, as well as the actual DNA sequences that were found. So linking that a little bit to what the data is behind all this information. And hopefully this will also allow scientists to then confirm if um, this, how reliable this species detection is. We did do a lot of work in confirming species detections and reviewing species detections with local communities, but of course in such a global um, and in such a global work, we, there may still be some misidentifications, but we hope that um, by giving all the information, people will be able to evaluate that for themselves. We also have a bit more scientific information. So for example, we will show the taxonomic composition across samples where you can see, for example, the um, remaining unknown sequences in each sample. So the proportion of reads that still remain unknown um, which I think is very crucial information if you are working with eDNA. Um, we also show the differences between the different locations with um, alpha diversity and beta diversity measures. Um, in addition, on other tabs, we have just the species list as a table, um, as well as corona plots, so you can discover that um, taxonomic um, diversity um, and explore that. We also have a samples tab where we show the all the different samples that were taken and the information on them. And finally, which I think is very interesting for many people and for hopefully the, the local managers as well, is um, my colleague Silas um, has done a um, climate analysis on these, um, on these species that we find. So he's looked at the thermal ranges of the species that we detected and evaluated how close they are to the edge of their thermal range and what will happen with different possible climate scenarios. So which species will be at risk with different, um, um, with different temperature increases at the site. So in this case, we hope that the managers can, can um, explore these tables, look into, for example, the fish species that they are interested in, see which of these species might be most at risk um, in the future when temperatures rise. So that's it on the projects and their developments. Um, we have, um, and now I'll talk a little bit about what OBIS is doing in terms of DD, eDNA. Um, we really think of OBIS as a possible ASV repository for genetic data. Um, we have the infrastructure that is needed for um, uh, sharing, for collecting and sharing that data in a fair way. Um, in addition, we have many guides on how you can add data to OBIS. Um, with our manual and uh, different videos and training manuals. Um, we are also developing data products, as you have seen in this uh, presentation. 
that we hope will help decision makers use that eDNA data to their benefit. In addition, we are involved in many European projects for eDNA data standardization. Um, for example, to mention one is the Marco Bolo project, and we had a data analysis challenge where we are looking into um, using one standard data sets um, with many different bioinformatics pipelines, and we're uh, sourcing that from the community and looking at how the outputs of those different bioinformatics pipelines differs to evaluate how robust the uh, analysis methods are that the community is currently using for eDNA. Um, so thank you very much. Um, I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person, but feel free to send any questions um, that you may have to my email address, which is right here. So thank you for your time.